it's maple syrup time. I'm going to finish collecting our supplies that we need, but in the meantime, take a look at the chat that David and I had at the maple tree in our meadow the other day after we had tapped all of our trees. I'm going to go finish collecting the supplies. I'll be right back. Okay, so tell everybody at home how many maple trees there are. Well, there's, there's three, three maple trees here in Pennsylvania for the most part. There's uh, red maples, there's sugar maples, and silver maples. And this is a? This would be a red maple, also known as soft maple. Okay, and we tapped another tree across the creek, and that is a? That would be a silver maple. Silver maple. And what is so special about the red maple? Uh, well, the red maple is, uh, it grows in, in, in wet areas, in uh, the areas that have poor drainage. We just happen to have a lot of red maples here. Red maples don't have as high a sugar content as sugar maples on average. However, this tree does have a very high sugar content. It Probably does. because it grows out in the open and it uh, doesn't really have any kind of competition from any other kind of trees. Now we just tapped this tree and we have two taps, two buckets hanging from this tree, but really we could have a third, don't you think, because of the diameter of the tree? Right, we could put a, we could put a third tap on this tree. Um, you, you, you don't want to tap trees smaller than 10 inches in diameter. And as a tree gets larger, you can add additional taps. Um, so I opted only to put two, but we could put another one on here because it's well in excess of... Uh, um, of you know, the 10 inches. Yeah, 40, uh, four or five feet. Let's talk about the height from the ground that you want to put your tap or place your taps, place your buckets. Is there a rule of thumb to follow with that? Well, you know, as far as the, the height of the height of the buckets, just really keep it out of reach of you children, know, <laughs> of, you know, of animals or whatever that could get into them. Um, and obviously you don't want them too high. So you put them at a comfortable height and then uh, your tap placement really should vary year to year. So if you uh, if you uh, last year's uh, drill uh, spot, you should go either uh, four inches uh, up or down or four inches laterally. Because uh, you'll get, you know, probably get a little bit of scarring inside the tree. And we've got a couple, couple holes there from years past. And does the, does the tapping hurt the tree? No, you know the, you know, tapping won't hurt the tree unless you, you unless you drill excessively, excessively deep, uh, or you put too many, uh, uh, you drill too many taps in a tree. And do you have to do anything after you remove the tap to protect the tree, or, or you know? prevent anything from getting into the tree? No, you just pull the tap out when the, uh, when the, uh, when the, uh, when the weather gets warm and the sap stops the flow. And you can actually see here, there's some uh, old tap marks right. from previous years that some of them are almost completely filled in. Right. Okay. The only time it would be maybe possibly harmful to a tree, uh, if you get into areas where they're, where they're uh, cutting hard maple, sugar maples for a lumber, sometimes that I have some, some of my friends have told me that there'd be some streaking in the wood, which will degrade lumber value. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the weather. How do we know when it's time to tap the trees? Right, the ideal, the ideal weather for tapping maple trees is when you have nights that go into the 20s and days that get into the 40s on a consistent basis. So that, of course, that will vary depending on what part of the country you're in. So we've got that capillary action See, I use the word. Oh, that's fancy. I know. What does that mean? <laughs> it means it squeezes the sap from the trees. Oh, I get it. Yeah, okay. I get it. So how long would you say the sap season lasts? Uh, it can be anywhere from uh, two weeks to, you know, over a month. And there can be breaks. There can be like a first run um, early in February. And then there could be, you know, the main run that will last longer. And what are some indicators that the season is drawing to a close, other than my tired of hauling firewood? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the the biggest thing is your if you have consistent temperatures above freezing, so you have a warm spell that is stays in the 40s, that there's no freezing at night, and also you'll on the maple trees you'll start to see buds. Right. Right. And then the sap will get dark. The oh. Remaining sap. What's so special about the first the first um, collection of sap in as far as the the grade of syrup goes yeah for small time you know uh, batch producers like us it's not a big deal because it's all for home use but the first run of sap is always clear it's grade a amber mm -hmm. sap 
or a syrup. So it's very light colored, uh, very mild. The later, the later syrup, as you, uh, as you go further along in the season, will be darker. We'll have a stronger flavor also. Let's um, talk really quickly about the buckets themselves. Um, nothing really special about the bucket, um, but there is a lid on top. And why do we need the buckets covered? Okay, well, the buckets are covered because of, uh, mostly because of moisture. So when we bo we're boiling, when we're boiling sap, we're boiling water away to get, get at the sugar. So if you, if you don't have it covered and it rains, you're, you're causing yourself some extra work and extra fuel. Uh, and also keeps it cleaner. All right, come on, let's go. All right. All right, let's take a look at the supplies that we'll need. A clean food grade bucket to collect your sap. A hand drill with a 7 16 inch bit. Your maple sap buckets. The lids with the spiles. Evaporator pans oven mitts because you're, you're going to need to handle the pans when they're on the campfire and the last stage cheesecloth a candy thermometer and a small saucepan let's get started Oh, it's starting to drip. So we had an extra bucket. And it's a perfect tree to, perfect tree to put an extra bucket on. So how far in are you going? Uh, approximately two and a half inches. Just clear it out a little bit and we'll put the tap in. He's really running. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's perfect. All right, quick, hang it. We're losing sap. All right. Great. Let's go check the other bucket. All right. Did you get all the sap? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So tell me, do you know what evaporation is? Yeah, evaporation is when little bits of water rise up into the air. Perfect. Well, how does that come into play with our maple syrup? What does that mean? What's evaporating right now? Everything except the sugar. Except the good stuff, right? So we boil this down, and as it boils down, what do we keep doing the whole day long? Keep on adding sap. Keep adding sap and boiling this down until it reduces and reduces. What happens to the color? You know, when we first start, it looks like water, doesn't it? Yeah, and then it turns brown like maple syrup. It turns brown. like It's like a caramel color, isn't it? What about the fire? Do we have to keep the fire going all day? Yeah. <laughs> That's the hardest part, isn't it? <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe. You chilly? Yeah. Why don't you go on in, Dad and I will finish up, all right? So how many gallons did we get? 
Uh, today, not too much, about a little over two gallons. A little over two, and it's all because of the temperature the last couple of days, right? Uh, it got warm. It was warm yesterday, and it flowed well, but then it was cold last night, so it's starting to flow again. But, um, you know, it'll probably flow through the night. So the process from here on out is fairly simple. We just keep feeding sap into the evaporator pan and keep feeding wood to the fire. Now, we've got how many gallons that we collected just now? Uh, only about two more gallons to add to this. And I've had this going since noon today and it's been going for about five hours now. So we're thinking maybe, what, another hour and a half or so? Yeah. Yeah, as long as you keep the fire going hard and the and the sap boiling vigorously, then uh, now, it won't take that long. How do you know when to take it from this into the house to finish it off? Well, I know by the color it starts to turn a you know a caramel color, but also I can tell by the uh, you know the, the boiling, uh, the, the the bubbling starts to slow up a little bit, so it's a little bit different boiling. It's just based on experience. It just looks a little thicker. Yeah. So um, we'll put it through a strainer out here into our saucepan. We'll take the saucepan into the house and use the candy thermometer to bring it up to 220 degrees, which for us at this elevation is seven degrees above the boiling point of water. So be sure to check your elevation and make the amendments accordingly. And watch carefully because it happens quickly. It happens quickly. When it reaches that very last degree, it goes quickly. So you have to, you have to be on top of it or you'll make maple candy like I've done before. <laughs> Hard maple candy. And a mess. <laughs> and a mess. Yeah.